smiled at me. I don't have a robe, no song. In the I've shared with you these words of our 23rd song. When we are in need of comfort and strength, we often turn to the psalmist. And so, for those of you who wish to join me, I invite you to recite these words with me as we say together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember him. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too will live, for he is now a part of us, as we remember Fred Shapiro. To his children, to Gary, Ira, and Diane, and also to Emma, Anne, and Mark. To his grandchildren, to Benjamin, Madeline, Ashley, Bailey, Carrie, Ryan, Kristen, Melanie, Matthew, Jeremy, and Sam. And also to Avi, Gabriel, Ryan, Susie Kay, and Kevin. And to his 10 great grandchildren. To Brooks, Wesley, Riley, Mackenzie, Aurora, Sasha, Andre, Mia, Noah, and Sophia. What a beautiful, beautiful legacy. To all the members of the family and to so many dear friends, those who are able to gather with us today, to those of you who join us via Zoom, whether here, whether miles away, our hearts are joined in this moment as we find the strength to remember, but also to celebrate the life of your beloved friend. We've been taught that birth is a beginning and death a destination and that life is a journey from childhood to maturity, and from youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again, from health to sickness, and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, and from loneliness to love, 
from joy to gratitude and pain to compassion, from grief to understanding and from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not in some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Fred's journey, a journey of more than 96 years, began here in Cleveland. He was born on November 10, 1926, to his Russian and Polish immigrant parents, Isidore and Lottie Shapiro. Fred was one of three brothers, and together with his older brother, Mort, and his younger brother, Sonny, both of blessed memory, they made their way through some of the most difficult times in our nation's history. Mort, Fred, and Sonny all attended school and also worked in their father's kosher poultry shop. I'm told that Fred was driving the poultry delivery truck, or car, when he was just 14 years young. The Shapiros were a loving, happy, and close-knit family. Fred and his brothers grew up in the famed Glenville neighborhood, and Fred was blessed with many wonderful friends, lifelong friends, and friends from childhood. Mickey Katz, Mickey is here with us, his first cousin Betty, to, Big, to Betty and Mickey and to all of the friends. We offer our condolences to you as well. As a youth and a teen, he was an excellent student who excelled also at, at, at athletics. And he did not play on any teams for Glenville because truthfully, his mother wouldn't allow it. She didn't want her son getting hurt in a contact sport. So one day, Fred, who was really a good boy, but one day he forged his mother's signature on a consent form so he could play intramural football. As his children told me, they heard stories from their father that he had played a great game on this one particular day, and he performed what he called the most amazing, epic, greatest block. <laughs> and one problem, though, while blocking, Fred was hit really hard, and he broke his collarbone. His mother was not pleased. Following his graduation from Glenville High School, Fred served our country as a news correspondent in the United States Navy. He was stationed in Hawaii until the war ended. There was a moment during Fred's time in the Navy when he was on leave and he returned home to Cleveland for a visit. Now friends, some of you may have been with us when we gathered on this holy ground back in August of 2022 for the funeral service honoring the life of Helen. In preparing my remarks for that day, I remember Fred shared with me the following information about his beloved. Fred shared that he was on leave in Cleveland and a buddy of his fixed him up on a date with Helen Solomon. She was quite impressed with Fred and he was quite smitten with Helen, a woman who Fred described as beautiful on the outside but especially on the inside. He saw her inward beauty and for both Fred and Helen, it was really love at first sight. They both ended up at The Ohio State University, where Fred majored in journalism and graduated Phi Beta Kappa. He also served as editor-in-chief of OSU's newspaper, The Lantern. The two of them were married on September 5, 1948, and they remained married for nearly 72 years until the time of Helen's passing. From their humble beginnings living on the third floor of a house in Columbus, perhaps the attic, to their move to New York City in order for Fred to begin his graduate studies in political science, to their move to Boston for Fred to begin law school at Harvard. Fred and Helen were always a team. And I know that when I spoke at Helen's funeral, I used the Hebrew phrase that's found in the Sheva Brachot, the seven wedding blessings of the Jewish wedding ceremony. I used the phrase of Reim Akuvin to describe the two of them. Literally translated, it means loving partners. Speaking of his law school years at Harvard, Fred attended Harvard on a full scholarship. And as a couple, Fred and Helen, they loved to dance. And they danced through a long and beautiful life together. 
They even took ballroom dance classes where they proudly mastered the electric slide. They loved to travel together, enjoying adventures in London, Paris, and Amsterdam. There was that wonderful trip to Italy to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. And they created a home for their family on Lomond in Shaker Heights, a home that was so welcoming, a home that was open to all of your friends. Your mom and dad treated your friends with warmth and kindness and your friends throughout the years and especially just in recent days with comments regarding your dad's passing, your friends shared how much they truly adored your parents. But we all know that Fred and Helen's greatest joys, in a word, family. And when Gary and Ira and Diane entered into Fred and Helen's world, this already beautiful Shapiro photograph became a family portrait, a very beautiful family portrait. And now friends, as you heard me mention, 11 grandchildren and 10 great grandchildren. In Yiddish, all we can say is Kanahara. Really, this is amazing. Fred and Hal Helen leave a lasting legacy. And they were able to show their children and everyone who knew them a shining ex example of a true love affair. This was a great gift that they left to their children and to their generations. As the three children shared with me just yesterday, they said they were the perfect parents. In describing their father, Diane, Ira, and Gary shared with me that he was a man of great integrity. He was a man who was honest and wise and intelligent, a man who was down to earth and never pretentious. He was a man who had a gentle soul, who was humble and kind, but who also had a great sense of humor. He was funny and silly. And his son-in-law, Mark, shared simply, he was charming. In recalling Fred and his playful side, I must share that he was a member of a special group of guys, the 12 Caesars, an investment club, which included his brother Mort. This was, as Diane stated, I'm quoting Diane, a colorful cast of characters who had so much fun together. They were just discussing investments, friends. They did a lot of fun things together, including many travels to Las Vegas, where they were being pranksters, being boys, just having fun. In his life's work, in seeking justice, he practiced law for nearly 60 years. In his work and in his personal life, Fred was never complacent. When there was a cause, when there was a wrong that needed to be made right, Fred rose up. His children learned that their father joined a group of Cleveland lawyers and traveled to Washington, D.C. to protest the Vietnam War. Fred also volunteered his time and talents with the ACLU to tackle civil rights cases. Fred was a progressive thinker, and he could have easily run for office. He could have had a slightly different career in our nation's capital, but for Fred, the idea of uprooting his family, that was a deal breaker. Family always came first and was most important to him. Fred and the relationship he had with his beloved Helen and his children, priceless. Fred and how he felt about his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. This, of course, was a love that was immeasurable. You know that your grandfather adored you. He knew you. He remembered you. He called you regularly just up until about three or four weeks ago. Your Grandpa Fred or Papa Fred loved all of you so deeply and how incredibly proud he was of all of your accomplishments. Fred and Helen were lifetime members at the Temple to Fareth Israel. He was an avid reader and a scholar and was a member of the Rowe Fan Club, a literary society. And along with ballroom dancing, Fred was also a lover of music and art. His favorite place, his happy place, Interlochen Center for the Arts. His children wanted me to mention something to all of you today. They wanted me to mention a very special member of their extended family. Special thanks and much love to Jean Garrett, Fred's caregiver, a dear friend of the family for several years. And Jean, 
We know that you've been friends, and it's very special to Helen and Fred, and their children are so grateful for your caring heart. You've been a bright light of hope for them. And so friends today, with sad but grateful hearts, we join with the sages of our people as we recall the life of Fred Shapiro and the good deeds that he performed in the land of the living. We say, Zichron Vigracha, we pray that the memory of Fred Shapiro will always be a blessing. And to this we say, Amen. We are taught that words which come from the heart enter directly to the heart. And at this time, Gary has words on his heart he wants to share with all of us. everyone. Thank you for being here today. Well, my brother or sister, appreciate you taking the time to come here today. Remember and honor my father. I just want to say a few words about my father and what he meant to me and my family. Many of you knew my father as an attorney, a Navy veteran, or one of the 12 Caesars but to us, he was our hero. I feel so lucky to have, have Fred Shapiro as my dad. He was kind, he was gentle, and a true guiding force in my life. He was always there to nurture us, but never criticized us or made, her feel, feel, made us feel bad. He was the smartest man I ever knew, and I always wanted to be just like him. Up until the last weeks of his life, he was still asking me, how's the insurance business? He just wanted to make sure that we were okay. Well, Dad, you did a great job. We are all okay. No, re no need to worry anymore. You can rest now. And I hope you and Mom are together. Friends, as we prepare for the rites of burial, I want to share with you just a couple brief announcements. Anyone wishing to make a contribution in memory of Fred, the family's requested that you might consider one of the three, either the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research, the Alzheimer's Association, or Interlocking Center for the Arts. Following our service here today, the family will be receiving visitors at the Courtyard by Marriott at 2021 Cornell. This is on the corner of Cornell and Euclid. The family hopes that you can join them to visit and to sit down and have a little lunch with them. And visitation will go until 2 p.m. today.
Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, Creator of the Universe, the Righteous Judge. Adonai Natan Adonai Lakach Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach. God has given, and now God has taken away. Still, we bless the name of God. Hayashav Hafar Al Haaretz Kishahayav Haruch Tashuv El HaElohim Asher Natana. The dust returns to the earth as it was, but the spirit returns unto God who gave it. May the soul of Fred Shapiro be bound up in the bond of life eternal. Send comfort, God, to those who mourn, and grant strength to those whose burden is sorrow. As you are able, I invite you to rise for the memorial prayer, El Male Rachamim. El Male Rachamim, Shochem Bamrom, Am Semenocha Nechona, Tachat Kanfe Hashchina, Demalot Kedoshim Opori, Kizo Haradakia Mas Yirim, Et Nihishmat, Ephraim, Ben Yitzchak, Velea, Shahalach La Olamo, Began Eden, Tehem Enuchato. Anna Baharachami Mastirehu Besater Kenafah Leolamim Utro Bitro Rachayim at Nishmato Adonai Hunachalato Viandu Afishalom Amishkavo Vinomar Amen. O God, exalted and full of compassion, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Fred Shapiro, to Ephraim, Ben Yitzchak Vileah. To Fred, who has gone now to his eternal home, God of mercy, we beseech you to remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that he performed in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bond of life. God is his portion. May he rest in peace. And to this we say, Amen. We turn now to the words of our mourners' Kaddish. And we recite together. Yitzchadal, v'yitzchadash, shamei Raba. v'yalma divra chirutei, v'yamlich malchutei, v'chayi chon, v'yomei chon, v'chayi d'chol beit Yisrael, v'agala v'izman kariv, v'yamru, amen. Yehei shmei Raba mevarach le'olam olamei almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach, v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnasei, Vieta dar, vieta le, vieta lau, shmeid kudisha, perihu. La ela min kol birchata, vishirata, tush bechata, benechamata, damira, vioma, vioma, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shamaya, vichayim, alenu vial kol Yisrael, viamru, amen. O se shalom, vioma, kuya se shalom, alenu vial kol Yisrael. Amen. We pray that God who makes peace in a high place will continue to send peace to you, the mourners, to Israel and to all humankind. Amen. We know that when we're born, we come into this world with loving hands to hold us, to guide us. And we're also taught by our tradition that when we exit from this world, it should not be in the hands of strangers, but in the hands of those who knew us and loved us. And so I invite you now, as we exit from this place, if you wish to place earth on the casket, to please do so. Anyone else who wishes to place, sir, I invite you to come forward. <laughs> <laughs> 